Hi guys, um, I recently finished another book and as always uh, when I do finish one I always try to write up a book review and share it with you. Share what it's about, what I thought about it, and all of that good stuff. And uh, I spent several, well, maybe about a month or a month and a half reading this because I haven't been doing as much reading as I have in months and years past for several reasons, but um, it wasn't the content matter so much that made it difficult. It was just that I don't have as much time to read these days. Um, anyway, the book is Mary Midgley's uh, Wickedness. And just a word about the author herself first. Mary Midgley is an English writer, thinker, um, and I guess you could call Wickedness this book a, a book of philosophy. Um, it very much uh, is about, as you'll see when I get into the body of the review, about the human problem of wickedness or, or badness. Um, but she's very much an outsider when it comes to institutionalized, formal academic philosophy. She wrote this book about 30 years ago, in fact, I think she published it in 1983, 1984, and um, it was just recently put out, I think recently, by, <clears throat> by Rutledge. So th what makes Mary interest, what makes Mary Midgley so neat to read is that because she's so removed from that institutionalized formal setting, she, she says things sometimes that put her at odds with people who are in uh, academia. And I think you could probably call this book one of those examples. It's very much a um, present some ideas that aren't in the mainstream as far as moral philosophy and ethical thinking are concerned. So, um, so on with the, that was just the introduction, on with the actual body of the review. Um, religious thought, and especially the effects that theology can have um, on religious thought, that word keeps popping up again, the formalizing effects of theology, uh, can have uh, the effect of what I call theologizing the natural. And when you theologize the natural, you take a perfectly earthly, human, natural occurrence or state, and you attribute it to a higher power or higher function, like God. This is essentially what's been done with the problem of human evil, or as Mary Midgley calls it in this book, to avoid these more overtly theological implications, she just calls it wickedness. And that just keeps it very secular. Uh, instead of looking at the motives for human behavior, we look at the causes uh, oftentimes for sin or the causes of transgressions against the will of God. Uh, note how both have very uh, loaded religious language. But Mary Midgley thinks that morality and wickedness are human phenomena. M one of the strongest things this book has going for it is that it fight against this theologizing effect and looks at human behavior for what it really is, a natural phenomenon. One of the points Mid Midgley drives home from the very beginning is that we need to stop seeing wickedness in a Manichaean way. We need to stop seeing it as the opposite of goodness, as something positive. And rather, it needs to be envisioned as a lack of certain capacities, a set of capacities. We need to, quote, to think of wickedness not as primarily a positive, definite tendency like aggression, whose intrusion into human life needs a special explanation, but rather as negative, as a kind of general failure to live as we are capable of living. So, and I'll come back to this at the very end, but this is sort of an Aristotelian notion of morality, uh, as goodness, as happiness, as a set of human capacities that you have to gain and actually uh, nourish in order to gain uh, or maintain friendships, happiness, uh, all of the things that we associate with uh, humanity in a well-lived life. Uh, just for emphasis, and she does emphasize this point, 
She wants to see evil not something that is present, but something that is absent, an absence of certain human capacities. Again, she says, a general denial and rejection of positive capacities. And she's just as interested in combating the idea of moral skepticism or reductionism. Uh, that is to say, the idea that moral problems as such might not even exist, or if they did, that, they're, that they wouldn't have solutions. Due to the difficulty of moral problem solving, many solutions, and Midgley calls these, quote, overly romanticized solutions, have been proposed, the most popular of which has been the skepticism that there is no possibility of addressing these problems. But even uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, commonly and incorrectly regarded as a kind of 19th century immoralist, knew that such problems existed. And if there was something even resembling a slight unity in human motive, that they could be adequately addressed and answered. Midgley assumes that we can answer these questions because there is something about the nature of the universe, and much more specifically about the nature of human behavior, that makes it, for the most part, reliable and predictable. So she assumes a kind of soft determinism, as opposed to the hard kind of determinism, which is often unfairly thrust upon natural scientists. And she says that these problems can, in fact, be solved and that we can reconcile ourselves to, mo to moral problem solving. And more importantly, being able to predict moral behavior doesn't threaten the possibility of human freedom since we live in a world rife with contingency, which sometimes sort of knocks those predictabilities uh, askew. We often try to see wickedness, uh, she argues, as having one kind of cause as well. But she wants to say that this isn't the case. And perhaps one of the more popular causes of human wickedness, she says throughout the book, is aggression. But while aggression is a tendency to attack, it might not always be a violent or a destructive one. Aggression no more implies destructiveness than having a foot means wanting to kick something. Aggression itself might be the root of some evil, and it certainly is, especially if it's uncontrolled. However, controlled aggression is essential to proper socialization and many other human processes. Think about if you ever have a debate about morality with someone, or uh, the nature of sin, or physics. Aggression is actually something you want, or else you'll have really no reason to form a counter-argument to an argument that you happen to disagree with. Aggression is good. It's, it's the violence and the destructiveness behind that aggression that is often not so good. To imagine a world without aggression or fear, which is another emotion commonly uh, reputed to be the source of much evil, would be to live in a utopia where we were disconnected from our humanity, if only because our brain chemistry would need to be so drastically altered. In the end, Mary Midgley ends up looking, as I said, like a certain kind of reformed neo-Aristotelian, um, at least insofar as she thinks that wickedness is related to the capacity or unwillingness to live in accordance with true human nature. She spends a lot of time arguing against certain strains in contemporary moral thought, like reductionism and skepticism, but ends up with what I've always thought was a rather attracting, attr attractive and convincing idea, which is that thinking through moral problems involves a set of certain positive capacities, including but not limited to capacities like empathy, compassion and understanding, which enable real self-understanding and real self-realization, uh, and without which we cease both to be able to know these problems and to offer rational, reasonable, secular solutions to them. So if any of that sounds interesting, check out Mary Midgley's Wickedness. It's a great little edition by Rutledge. See you next time, guys.